Preston Docks is a thriving area, filled with shops, dog walkers, runners and cyclists. It's a proud area for Prestonians, filled with history and memories, but the docks weren't always what Preston has come to know and love today. Steve Miller, director of the Preston Marina, has grown up on the docks, working at the marina for 30 years, and thinks of it as a second home. Really what I know about the history of the docks is from working at the marina since uh, since the docks closed really in the, the well the, the docks closed in the early 80s 1981 and the, the idea for the marina came around in the mid 80s and and the marina as it is now opened in in 1990 30 years ago and that's really where where i come in is, is after the, the closure um my family has a historical connection with the docks um my great granddad uh, back before the docks were built was a, was a local politician uh, he was uh, an alderman and a councillor, uh, and he was opposed to building the docks. He said it would not be financially a good idea for Preston to, to build this dock, it would be really expensive, uh, and we're, we're a long way from the sea, we're 15 miles from the sea, so, you know, he wasn't sure it was a, such a good idea to build it, and he was my great granddad. Luckily, they didn't listen to my great granddad, and they did build the docks, they went, and, and if they had listened to my great granddad, I wouldn't have a job. The docks were planned for the city after the growing impact of the Industrial Revolution. The rapid expansion of the city during this time saw a demanding need for import of manufacturing goods and distribution of products. The River Ribble was diverted in 1883 to allow the dock to be built by Preston. Workmen dug a new channel for the river, lined it with stone before they started to create the dock basin. The foundation stone was laid in 1885 by Queen Victoria's first son, Albert Edward, the Prince of Wales, leading to one of the basins being named after him, the Albert Edward Basin. This basin is 3,000 foot long and 600 foot wide, and at its time it was the largest single dock in Europe. The dock was finally completed in 1892 by Alfred, the Duke of Edinburgh and Queen Victoria's second son. We did build the docks. Uh, it opened in 1892, I think it was, and, and it, it was a busy port. I don't think, and I'm sure a historian who knows more about the details would correct me perhaps, but I think it's generally true to say that the docks, even though they were quite busy, they were never particularly profitable because my, my great granddad was right, dre dredging 15 miles of river was very expensive, and so the costs of running Preston Dock were very high. Uh, and. Preston was facing stiff competition from other places with docks uh, and and uh, and so yeah Preston had uh, had the docks for about 100 years but uh, say I don't think they were ever particularly successful financially um, but then in the 80s the docks closed uh, and uh, we the marina popped up in the mid 80s and in early 1990s as you see it now that's that's where I, I started to work here um, so I've seen the, the, if you like, the modern face of the docks uh, uh, and I've seen it grow from being uh, an, an abandoned dockland to a busy place with people uh, live here in the, in the flats and houses and the shops and of course we're the marina, we, we occupy one corner of the docks and, and we try and promote the, the use of the dock from a water perspective with people using boats and out on the water behind us now there's people using kayaks and all sorts of things. And on the 31st of October 1981, the dock officially ceased to be a working port. Dredging had become too expensive and it was closed by an Act of Parliament. This was a sad moment for many Prestonians as it seemed that the history of Preston Docks was over. But for what we're seeing today, the history was really only just beginning. When our company was started, there was really nothing here. There was the dock basin, which is 40 acres of water, which is the docks. But all of the quayside was basically empty, derelict land. There was one building, which uh, just in the background now, which was the only proper brick warehouse that Preston Dock ever had, which was a, at the time an abandoned warehouse, which is now being converted into luxury flats. But otherwise, there was there was nothing on the on the actual land. When we started, Morrison Supermarket was literally just being built. I remember when my dad first started our company, we didn't have any jetties and all the, the, the setup we've got now. We just had six mooring boys in the middle of the dock. It was an experiment, really, to see if, if boat owners would come to Preston Dock. And Morrison's was just being built at the time. I think it was 1986. Um, but other than that, there was nothing on the land at all. 
some people in Preston will remember the Manxman, uh, which was an ex Isle of Man ferry, uh, which it was a very pretty ship. It looked like a, a miniature transatlantic liner. And when it retired from doing the, the Isle of Man uh, ferry work, which it was built for, it was brought here to Preston Dock in the, the early 80s with the aim of it being a visitor attraction, you know, part of the start of the redevelopment of the docks. Um, so that was down in the corner where Halfords is now. Um, and that was here for uh, about uh, six or seven years it became a nightclub uh, and then it was it wasn't particularly successful and it was it was towed out of here so in the, in the early days of our company there was really nothing other than our our six mooring boys and our marina office was my mum's caravan our second hand touring caravan was the marina office morrison's was being built and the manxman was down in that corner and that's all there was here in when we started but not many northern inland towns like Preston have a dock area, making Prestonians very proud of what we have to offer. It's used commonly to advertise the city, and for many Prestonians, it's a place that they like to come, sit back and relax, go for a run, take the dog for a walk, or pop into the marina for a cup of tea as they're going around the Guild Wheel. It's also home for shoppers at Morrison's and home base, as well as a residential area for many people living in the flats that surround the marina. I think, um, well, I think Preston as a whole is proud of the docks and the marina. Quite often when you see brochures for the city of Preston, you know, whenever you see publicity shots of Preston, they'll have photographs of the docks as, the, if you like, the, the centrepiece, um, because it, the docks are what make Preston different to lots of other industrial northern towns. You know, it is something, I'm not saying unique, of course, other towns have docks, but not many inland towns have got a docks complex like this. So I think it, it is something Preston should be proud of, and on the whole is. There have often been people that say that things could have been done, done differently. In the When the docks closed in the early 80s, there were lots of ambitious plans to have hotels and huge leisure facilities, um, but no one actually came forward to, to pay and make those happen. So, you know, the, the docks have developed in, a, in the way that they have, and I think it's been a, a, a good development. I think a, a, it's a, a nice balance of different uses of residential and, and co commerce without being too much of one thing. And I consider myself fortunate that it's a nice place to come to work. You know, I, I am passionate about boats as a hobby. So being able to be around boats for work is a privilege. And, uh, and so, yes, it's a, it's a nice job to have. And I think Preston rightly should be proud of its, its docks development. And I think it is. The Preston Marina sits at the heart of the docks. Many boat owners come in and use the marina as a repair area for the boats. And the Preston Dragons practice out on the water every single week. Although due to the COVID-19 pandemic, they've not been able to practice in the traditional way, they've made alterations to allow social distancing while still getting out on the water. Preston is not a big marina and it never never will be and was never going to be. For a boat owner, we are quite a challenging place to go boating. The, the, the Irish Sea is quite a difficult stretch of coastline. Anybody who knows our coast knows it's very tidal you know the tide isn't in for very long and and boats need water to be uh, to do their to do their boating so the, the tides and our distance from the sea make boating quite tricky so we always knew Preston was never going to be a, a, a become a, a hot spot for the recreational boaters we've got about 125 boats here we, you know we're, we're nearly at full capacity because we've got boats that float on the water and we've also got boats out of the water in the boatyard and you know between them we're, we're about at our, our capacity capacity um, uh, and what what we do think we are useful as a boater uh, my dad started the firm and he, or he, he owned a little only a small sailing boat and he likes to sail in Scotland uh, as a family all our family childhood holidays were sailing up in Scotland and it was you know great memories um, but as a boat owner living in Preston it was good to be able to bring the boat home for the winter and store it somewhere close to home for the winter where it's easy to work on it and do the jobs and and, and then go back up in the summer and, and sail it in Scotland and that's what we are useful so you know Many of our customers bring the boats to Preston Marina if they've got a job to do on the boat, if they need to do some work on the boat. Um, and then they, once they've done the work, they might go and sail in Wales or Scotland or the, the nicer sort of boating-y places. So we, we're sort of like a, a maintenance marina more than a, a sailing marina. And that works quite well. But in recent years, we have been able to add more activities 
to what can happen there. We've tried all sorts of uh, things and, and the dock itself is good for some water sports and not good for others. We tried high speed things like in the, in the very early days, I have to say it's more like it's over 30 years ago, we tried things like speed boats and jet skis, but we soon learned that that wasn't good in Preston Dock because anything that goes fast creates a wave behind it and the waves bounce off the dock walls and it soon becomes really rough and you can't do it. So it's not good for high speed sports, but it's really good for things like dragon boating and kayaking. Dragon boats are, are, are like big canoes with 20 people in and they race against each other. In the last few years, in fact, in the last four years, Preston has got a new dragon boat club and they've gone from nothing to winning local and national championships. So that's, that's really taken off in a big way. Uh, and uh, that's, that's, that's been superb, but recent times with COVID, we can't have 20 people all in one boat now, socially distancing. So the Dragon Boat Club are now adopting kayaking. And as we speak, I don't know if you can see behind us, but they're actually kayaking on the water as we speak. Um, and that's a way of using the dock and using the water and socially uh, distancing as well. So the marina building has now been operating for 30 years. And although it started as just a port for people that were bringing boats into the city, it has become a blossoming business with a cafe and a shop for everybody to come and use. The, the marina building where we are, we're on the balcony of now, um, opened in 1990 and it's quite a big building as you rightly say and it's our HQ so we've got the uh, the shop for boaty bits as you rightly say but it's also where our marina office is, it's where the toilets and showers are for the people who have boats here uh, and but there's still quite a lot of floor space left over from when we uh, put those things in and so we, we opened the coffee shop straight away in, in 1990 uh, as uh, really it was actually nev never intended to be as big as it got but it, it became popular straight away because Preston Docks is a, a popular destination for people to go for a walk and more recently the, the Guild Wheel cycle track goes right past so it's always been a popular location for people from this area to come to and naturally people need a brew when they're out and about so the coffee shop was popular from day one and it has grown and grown from just doing teas and coffees and sandwiches uh, to as you rightly say uh, very recently we've added a, a little bar to it it's only a little bit and pizzas and things like that it, it's still only a coffee shop it's not a restaurant but it, you know it is popular the ice creams are really popular um, we've made it bigger in the last couple of months specifically because we've needed to space things out we have needed to space the tables out for socially distancing so it, we actually ha haven't got any more tables than we had previously we've just used we've, we've used more space and spaced them out for safe social distancing uh, and it seems to be working really well it's still a, a popular place for people to come feel safe and enjoy a nice lunch and a cup of coffee and a little bit perhaps although the Preston docks is a blossoming area there's still plenty that could be done to make it thrive even more than it already is. And many developments are looking to take place in the area. Although Steve can't quite imagine exactly what could be done to keep the area as popular, if not more than it already is. It's hard to imagine what you could do cost effectively that would really make a huge difference. I mean, th there's not much land available to build on. It's it's here, it's done, it's, you know, and, and I think it's a, already a nice place. Um, what I, I mean, we'll never achieve what would make Preston a brilliant boating destination because we'll still always be 15 miles from the sea and the tides will always be the way they are with the tide only being in for a short amount of time. So as a boat owner and as a boat person, what I would like to see isn't really possible. And so we make the most of what we have got and, and you know, we enjoy it. Um, It's a hard one, is that? Because I like it as it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I really think Preston, the Preston Dock Estate, is a really good asset for the city of Preston, uh, and nothing's perfect. And it, having ideas is easy, uh, and lots of people over the years, and and regularly, I read the newspaper, and somebody will have a wonderful master plan to 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 do over Preston Dock, start again, and make it like some wonderful. Riviera attraction and that would be great of course who am I to say that that wouldn't be fantastic for the town and if that happens and somebody actually wants to do that then well good luck to them but a lot of people have made a significant invest investment here already where you know 
lots of us are already here and, and quite like it the way it is, if we're honest. And uh, in the absence of somebody coming forward and making it this wonderful Disneyland-style Riviera tourist attraction, I'm quite happy with the way it is, to be honest.